to the rodeo grounds and we kind of left that uh, out there. We have an agreement that is uh, pending uh, with the Coastal Saddle Club. You can see a lot of representatives, I think, here from that club. Steve's going to kind of read parts of his presentation to add a few pieces to it. So those of you who have seen this before, bear with him. Uh, it'll be a good review. And the question really boils down to what do you want to do with the rodeo grounds? Because to do something on the grounds that's open to the public requires some additional investment. And the question is going to be how much is that something you want to do or not do? What do you want to use that facility for? So I'll let Steve carry it. Okay. For the new members of the council and the audience, uh, we'll give you a little brief history of the rodeo grounds. It's located at Okay, on the rodeo grounds, it is located at uh, 125 Parkway Drive. It's about a nine-acre tract of land that's been used for rodeo grounds for as a rodeo ground and other public use for 30 plus years. And uh, the Wilson Saddle Club has had a lease during this time. Good. Absolutely, would you have to do? Okay. By the way, so the microphones are here so that we've got your voice being piped through the PA system here, but unfortunately the microphones are such that you have to get them pretty close to you. That's always been an issue, uh, short of putting a lapel mic or a mic around your neck or something. This is about all we've really got available for you, so if you can uh, pull that mic as close to you when you speak, it will help everybody else here. <coughs> All right, to continue on, the rodeo ground again is leased by the Lewis Saddle Club. That particular lease expired in December of 2010. And again, the officers and I have been working on that uh, since that time of the lease. However, uh, at this point in time, we had to look at the use of the facility to meet some ADA guidelines and timelines. The Lewis Saddle Club is a group of volunteers that use this facility for many, many years. Uh, they are volunteers and basically their project is to raise funds to keep their infrastructure on the site. The city owns the land and the Saddle Club basically owns the structures that sit on the land. The concession stand, the uh, bleachers, the arena itself, the press box, etc. So they do own that those particular items. So again, a lot of their funds are used to uh, complement their program as, as far as equestrian, riding, the saddle club uses, so to speak, rodeo <coughs> issues. And a major fundraiser is the Labor Day weekend rodeo. That should be a three-day event, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I believe. <coughs> so uh, in years past, there were several Louisville residents uh, on in Lewis and Saddle Club, several of them I've known. In today's world and their membership list, uh, there are no Lewis residents, so I need to bring that out to council and, and the public at this point in time. There's no, none from the high, Lewisville High School room? Not that I'm aware of on their membership role, no. Okay. Uh, again, the uh, Lewis and Saddle Club lease did expire, however, there was a provision in the agreement for a month-to-month -month lease, and they are current on their uh, quarterly payments to us, or month-to-month -month payment as of today. Again, we presented this information in June of 11, and again, tied to uh, this particular piece of property is where do we go from here? What type of improvements uh, to continue the use of this site for this particular event that needs to be met? And those basically uh, and what we need some direction from council whether it be at this event or tonight at the retreat or in the future is where do we go? Uh, do we proceed with improvements to bring the facility into uh, compliance with the ADA requirements? And then we do that, do we continue to uh, lease the facility for rodeo use or rodeo type use? And or do we terminate the lease and close the facility as it exists today. The uh, funding, just to give you what the city contributes into the project, we do 
the lawn maintenance or area of mowing of area outside of the arena gate. Uh, the saddle club maintains everything within basically the fenced area by the arena. The entire area is fenced, but the large open area is mowed and maintained by Wilson Parks and Wilson Services. The, uh, going into the Disabilities Act or ADA, uh, again, we went through a lot of this in June. There are several things that, or many things, at the arena today wish for me to go through the history uh, pretty detailed and long and I will go to the point of identifying what those non-compliances are rather than going through the law and the history. So that's all right if you may have. Okay. You go to required changes, complying with ADA, these are things that staff and consultants have reviewed and we've also reviewed these items with uh, of uh, officers, I'll put it to that, Mr. Weir and Ms. Johnson, uh, in the past, what we need to do. Uh, basically, accessible parking. We have to have parking uh, for ADA, and those are banned spaces and single ADA or handicapped spaces. Uh, must be accessible routes. Currently, if you go to the Saddle Club uh, or over to the arena, a lot of it's on grass. A wheelchair or a disabled <coughs> person cannot uh, get to some of the sites as a person without a disability could be <coughs> Seating, uh, accessible routes need to go from the parking areas to the ticket booth. There were some improvements made uh, by the Saddle Club at the concession area and the ticket window. There was a large turnstile that they did remove. That was a restriction got a lot of that corrected. Must have accessible routes to the concession, I mean to the concession area, the restrooms, and to the seating area, the bleachers. Last year we had uh, Saddle Club agreed. We had some dangerous situations on the easternmost bleacher areas. They did remove those. Uh, the only remaining bleacher system is on the south side of the arena. And to the performance area. We must have a accessible route to go into the arena uh, if, if that were the case and somebody needed to go there. Again, the basic concept is an individual that has a disability or a, uh, that needs to go to all areas that a person without a disability can reach. Uh, another item is some of the ticket booths and concession areas is having accessible windows. Some of the windows or uh, booth or what surface countertops or not in the correct type. Again, accessible seating is another area that uh, is in non-compliance. <coughs> accessible restrooms, again we can get by with this with uh, use of portable uh, restrooms. Uh, they do make uh, ADA accessible portable restrooms so that's not a major issue as long as we rent those as certain number of units that we need to uh, have on site during a large event and, and again the Saddle Club has been uh, good on making sure they have those uh, particular accessible restaurants in place. One of the things that we found out is that the arena must have or the people there must have assisted listening devices means they must have the ability, a person that is impaired, has impaired hearing, must be able to have the appropriate devices in place so that they can hear the announcers, what's going on in, in the event. So uh, that is uh, one item that we were not aware of until about a year ago. So, uh, yeah. Uh, existing conditions at the site, and these were taken about a year ago. Uh, you have your uh, reserve box, you see the, on the removed turnstile that has been corrected. Your reserve box, the Saddle Club did make some improvements to make sure we could get a wheelchair into some of the boxes last year. Next slide. Wait. Go back to this picture. The bottom right, is that, is that a paved surface right there? That is a concrete slab, I believe. 
So would that be considered uh, handicap accessible seating? Or they could wheel their wheelchairs up right there? They can, you just can't get to it. You can't get right, to it. but you could use that as, as the handicap seating. You just have to build a ramp to get yeah. to it. Yeah. Build a sidewalk. Sidewalk to get to it. Yes. But that could be used as a handicap accessible seating. Some part of it, but you have to have companion seats as well. Also, you can use chair for the companion seats. You can, yes. Sir. So you don't have to have accessible bleachers, just accessible seating. You have to have both. If you have, seats you have to have bottom, elevated seating. If you elevate the bleachers, yes. Sir. We'll get to that. We'll show you some examples here in just a moment. Next slide. If you see what, when we go through the rest of the program, these are the existing bleachers, and there is no wheelchair or accessible ramp up to those bleachers. They're about three and a half, four feet off the ground. And so what would, what would be proposed is you would have a ramp system into uh, on the bleachers. These particular bleachers do not meet ADA. I'll show you where we're headed on this. Accessible route to the arena. This particular gate on the right, uh, again, must have an accessible route for wheelchair. You do not have to have the accessible route into, uh, into the arena once you get past the gate, is my understanding. So there is some, uh, it's confusing, but that's the rule. That's the law with ADA and Next slide, please. Okay, I'll the rodeo grounds ADA issues, and let's talk about parking. There are two driveways into the rodeo area or into the rim. And you'll see the slide down to the bottom. I believe this is the easternmost drive. And basically, what we've talked about, there's a basically a, with trucks and cars and everything drive, there's a horseshoe right in there, a U shaped area that will accommodate the necessary ADA required parking. And there's approximately, I believe, 16 and 11 spaces in that area. And that will provide both van accessible and standard car ADA accessible or uh, provided parking. And we'll go through the cost. But basically, the number of slots or parking spaces based on a seat basket, 2,160 seats. The way we calculated this number was the particular the three sets of bleachers, what you've had there previously, would accommodate basically that amount of seating if you had all three bleacher systems set up. Next slide, please. Uh, again, you must uh, comply with uh, the ADA rules as far as accessible routes, and the location gives you some information there on how you get to the buildings structures, etc. Accessible routes, there's none. So that's uh, what we have to basically rework uh, to make this particular site compliant. The estimated cost of 35000 to put the accessible routes from the parking area to the ticket window, concessionary, restrooms, the accessible seats, and to the performance area. And again, you're looking at I believe it's a 48, I think we had a 48, 60 inch uh, accessible, I believe it's 48 inch is the minimum that you can have this. Next slide, please. This is basic concept that we pattern and uh, this presentation is, is referencing to. We are looking at an asphalt paving and parking area, not concrete. Uh, again, thus having some reduced cost. We have about fifteen thousand dollars to do that particular parking area. It will be striped and regulated. You still need the gates at each one securing the parking area when not in use when the facility is not being used. You see the accessible route from uh, parking area uh, to the turnstile or to the ticket booth. It's, uh, and then from the ticket booth, you have a concession area into the stands for the first uh, pad for bleachers. And what we're talking about here we'll get to in a moment is the bleacher systems. What we're looking at as far as uh, the type 
types of bleachers and three types of bleachers that we're looking at. And, uh, but again, to put these bleachers on a safe, securable site, you need to put a concrete uh, surface down to make sure that we can on both the uh, particular bleachers to and for ease of cleaning after an event. The cost for that one particular pad is $35,000. That includes uh, the accessible route as well. From the, pit. the concrete sidewalk uh, area, uh, I messed that up. The concrete sidewalk accessible route is $30,000. The pad is $35,000. The northeast and what I call southeast construction pads, the bleacher pads, are there as well, and two of those combined about 23,000. Then we have to have an accessible route to get to the portable restroom, so we relocated the restrooms a little bit to the southeast. Also, in this particular slide, there may be some movement of that easternmost fence where you uh, secure the arena area in the leash area, so there'll be some movement of that fence. I do not think a great deal, but it may be a five or ten foot movement to the east. Again, here is some information on the minimum number of required wheelchair spaces uh, for grandstands. And I use the term bleachers, sorry, but uh, uh, that gives you some idea of where we are. So we're in uh, a lot of wheelchair spaces. So, yeah. Council. This provision right here addresses the question of the mayor, and because you have to provide lines of sight that are comparable to those for members of the general public. So if somebody wants to sit up high, now, they can sit up high. You just can't sit in the ground. This is a general layout. Again, this is the maximum amount of uh, seats that you currently have, or you currently have, before we put the two eastern bleachers out. And if you see, you can see the wheelchair spaces along the phase one, 1260. We'll go into phasing in a few moments. We kind of get ahead of ourselves here. But you can see the number of <coughs> basic wheelchair and companion seating that you need for this facility. Next slide, please. Then the options. Here, here's where we begin our options on uh, particular seats. First is uh, purchase three grandstands, put it back to its original uh, seating capacity, and allow for the necessary handicap ADA required $221,000. That includes, that includes your concrete, all costs, your stands, and even the assisted listening devices. All of that's added into the particular cost. Option two, see for 1260 people or seats, seats cost $133,000. Option three, reducing that to 900 seats. And speaking on that particular area, uh, Mr. Wheeler and I discussed some nights you'll have 1,000, I believe the minimum is around 900 to 1,000 <coughs> at each of the rodeo events, larger on certain nights. Option four is to then go in and rent grandstands, have them put in for each event. And an example of that, the cost of a full 2,160 seats would be about $23,000, including set up delivery for one week. It's that they set them up basically for a week's rent. Could you back up one slide? Sure. Okay. Next slide. Accessible restrooms. Again, we can use the portable toilets and the required 
16 of those, two of which would have to be accessible. And again, I believe the uh, soccer club has been providing those as required uh, by the city for the county to uh, permit their event. If we were to require or build a restroom for that facility, you're looking at another $200,000 on the structure. Listening devices, there's 39 listening devices that would be required, and then 10 of them must be of hearing aid compatible. Okay, it's out of the ADA requirement for the number of seats or the number of seats you have for this one. So based on which seat capacity is correct. Based, based on which one? Max. Max. Okay. One point six. One point six. Okay. Sorry. And those devices can be used in other locations too. Okay. The uh, two hundred twenty-one thousand and one hundred thirty-three thousand and the eighty-nine thousand options you gave earlier. That included this hearing. Did it not? I believe that's correct. I was just wondering why we're talking about it separately. We're not really thinking. I'm just relaying what all this information that you've got to do to read ADA. Okay. I'll show you some slides. But well, just, but well, it, 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 those numbers you gave us did include all that. All right, thank you. Next slide. Here's a summary of those. Well, since you brought that up, oh, did that, did that, did that it, it include the listing, but it did not include the bathrooms. No, it did not. It did not include the pathways, right? <coughs> no, I, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. The seats, the 221, the 133, and the 88, that's for the bleachers and the concrete. 